How much longer? How much longer will we be expected to hand over nearly 160 quid a year for a state broadcaster that serves itself and ignores the people who pay for it? How much longer will the BBC take our money and run? How much longer will this strange, entitled organisation's obscenely overpaid executives keep secrets from the great British public that funds it. Meanwhile, the broadcasting house crew's refusal to call the murdering baby, beheading, granny-killing rapists of Hamas exactly what they are, terrorists, is a national scandal. The more livid licence fee payers demand the BBC does the right thing, the more the BBC digs its heels in and does the wrong thing, sulking like a naughty school kid caught red-handed who won't admit he's been busted, insisting that Hamas are not to be classified as two-bit murdering, raping, kid-killing terrorists, but as militants, as if they're bold freedom fighters devoted to their noble cause. They're not. They're scumbags, devoid of any morals whatsoever. How are we to get any sense from someone like 79-year-old B. Blyfer, John Simpson, who ludicrously joined the state broadcaster 53 years ago in 1970, and who, after more than half a century in the cosy B bubble, inevitably speaks fluent BBC BS. To call Hamas terrorists would be to take sides, explained John Cody Fiddler Simpson, and CBE haughtily. Hey, Johnny boy, it's OK to take sides against monsters who decapitate babies. Meanwhile, Michelle Hussein on Radio 4's flagship Today programme berates Defence Secretary Grant Shapps, pompously inquiring if he was aware of the broadcasting watchdog Ofcom's rules. Uh, Grant might be, Michelle, but you clearly are not. Ofcom has no objection to TV channels calling Hamas terrorists. So why won't the BBC do it? Is it because, like so many left-wingers, some of the staff actually sympathise with Hamas, as at least one of the BBC team in the Middle East is sacked and others remain under urgent investigation for allegedly posting pro-Palestinian missives on social media? Is it because some of the not remotely unbiased staff detest Israel? Is it because, contrary to old John Simpson's naive delusions, the left-leaning, shamelessly Remainer BBC is in no way impartial. You decide. It's not impartial, is it? Well, I'm fed up to the back teeth of the BBC, and if they want to spin whatever rhetoric they want to spin, they should not rely on taxpayers' money because they're finding it incredibly difficult to be non-biased. However, when it comes to the Palestine conversation, I do think that they need to try and remain balanced because, as we've seen, we've seen so much misinformation, disinformation online, whether did they behead babies, did they do this, did they do that? And I think it is difficult... Well, they when did behave, behead babies. Well... Yeah, the Jerusalem Post has established beyond all doubt they beheaded babies. That's not disinformation, that's information. But then it came out yesterday, they said that they cannot confirm to what extent No, who that can't happened. confirm it? Hamas. But, 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 Hamas. But, but regardless, they should still be calling Hamas terrorists. Yeah. Whether Hamas did behead yeah. babies or not, yeah. they are still a terrorist organisation. They and, did behead babies. And, and the government, if our government is saying Hamas are terrorists, yeah. the BBC should be saying they're terrorists. Yeah, I 100% I... agree with calling Hamas terrorists. What they're doing is absolutely vile and disgusting. However, like I said, if they're going to call that out, then they also need to call out Israel for breaking international law. And I think it's very difficult. You have to be very balanced Hang with on. this uh, which, discussion. In what way has Israel broken international law? Well, collective punishment. What do you mean? Breaking internet... When you uh, commit a war crime such as collective punishment, where you um, essentially subject the entirety of the population of Palestine... Well, to I, no don't war, no I don't accept they've done that. I don't accept that. Well, they've stopped that. water. That's just an argument. They that's stopped water. Argument. They stopped electricity. They stopped food. Amnesty that International is... and UN have said this, said similar to what Lynn May is saying. They, uh, they have yeah. essentially... Well, I stand with Israel. I don't stand with Hamas. I hope they do stop everything, because uh, Hamas and Palestine deserve they, some okay, sort of... No, 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 I understand let's that. Not, let's not go it's down this road. Poor Palestine. Law. They started it, didn't they? But what about they, the civilians? Well, what about the children? Yeah, the what about the 
Hamas this, this is it. This is it. I'm against Hamas, of course, but I think you can be you can be against Hamas and not be against uh, Gaza. I'm not against them. The thing I, I'm, you just very, said I'm, poor very, I'm very worried uh, about the people of Palestine because you have to separate Hamas mm. from exactly. the people that they rule. However, yeah. that's the way it goes. Uh, what, breaking pe international people law? do not declare war on people. Governments declare war on each other, and there's always collateral damage. And JJ, uh, here's a thing. Uh, you are not allowed to support uh, Hamas in this country. You're not mm -hmm. allowed to demonstrate in favour of Hamas because it is officially a terrorist, terrorist organisation. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, this country classifies Hamas as a terrorist organisation. Uh, countries all over the world classify it as a terrorist organisation. Yeah. Why won't the BBC? Because they're saying, we've never called anyone a terrorist. We've always, whether it's Al Qaeda Why or ISIS. Not? Exactly. No, it's, they, it's should. they should. They should do. They, they should. should do. Just because the BBC have done something one way for decades doesn't they mean that should. it's the right way yeah. of doing it. They should definitely be calling them terrorists. But it's just a catalogue of errors of the BBC, whether it's Jimmy Savile, whether it's uh, Hamas, whether it's Shoe Edwards, there's always an issue coming out of the BBC. And we have yeah. to pay for and it. We, we have Why do we have to pay for it? Well, as yeah. I pointed out, it's time. Look, they can do what the hell they like. I mean, they do do what the hell yeah. they yeah. like. But not to our expense. Regardless of what the people of this country want them to do, state broadcaster that won't do anything mm. we want. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they should be allowed to do exactly what they want as long as we don't have to give them 160 quid a year. Exactly, right? but I, I'm not promoting breaking the law. But what if we all just stop paying? There's no more space well, in prison out there. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people have. A lot of people have. No more spaces in prison. <laughs> what are they going to do with us if we careful. all stop paying? Sadiq, if... Sadiq will send the police around for you. Be <laughs> careful, mate. You don't want them coming I'll around I'll tell him here. where to go. <laughs> Two million people have stopped paying their licence fee and uh, really? I'm sure they won't end up in prison. But <laughs> There's too many people who work at the BBC who are like the BBC. Yep. We, we need more working class people. We don't need all these posh toffs who are in there running it. Same as The Guardian. It's, a, it's the same kind of yeah. cabal of people. They're the ones who are well, You don't problem. think we should have too many more John Cody fiddlers? Oh, God, there's, there's too many of them. I know. Too many and of also, them. Or people you know that what? don't re represent the majority of Britain, like look. Gary Lineker, is paying paid enormous amounts Over a million things. quid. Well, 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 well leave, leave St. Gary alone. You leave St. Gary alone. <laughs> yeah. he, he's I, do, a good I don't lad. hate him, he's however... The man often, is a living saint. Oftentimes <laughs> he says things and we, we doesn't re he represent... He lives on a higher us. plane to the rest of it. He's a marvellous <laughs> human being. Won't hear a word against him. But by the way, going back to John Simpson, I'm nothing against him personally, but it's not healthy for any human being no. to work for one company You're for more life. than half a century. Yeah. He's worked for the BBC since since 1970, 53 damn years. Yeah. That is not healthy. Yeah. So when you get John Simpson's opinion about what the BBC should and shouldn't do, it is pointless yeah. because he is completely institutionalised. Stockholm syndrome, that's what he's got. Yeah, yeah he's never going to... John... Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, completely. Yeah. He, he loves the BBC and... Listen, he's a fine journalist, John Simpson, but he's still part of the problem. Yeah, There's too many John Simpsons in the exactly BBC. Exactly right, exactly yeah. right. The BBC, they need a shake-up. Yeah, well, the BBC licence fee is uh, flatlining. It is a yeah. dead licence fee walking. And the sooner we get rid of it, the better, because then the BBC can do what the damn hell it likes. And by yeah. the way, get advertising, which would make it yes. get, make good programmes, because you don't get advertising for bad programmes, yeah. uh, which for the BBC would be a disaster, because all they're making right now is very, very bad promise. <laughs> Very, very bad programmes indeed, uh, including, of course, uh, uh, the uh, lack of comedy. There's no comedy on uh, the BBC <laughs> anymore, apart from John Simpson, who's very funny. <laughs> uh, now, uh, we're going to go to a bad ad. because the lady loves milk tray and the, the lady's got no idea what he's been through. <laughs> It up. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. Someone left me a box of chocolates. <laughs> hey, hey! I only got killed by a shark! <laughs> that, the, that whole um, Orcs They Loves Milk trade, they were cashing in on the popularity of Bond back yes, in the day, yeah, right? And so that's so Bond esque. Yeah. But fantastic advert. That I mean, that, that was a good advert. When chivalry was chivalry. Yeah. But do you think the milk tray man might just look on the basis of that? He's a bit of a stalker. <laughs> 
He's gone above and beyond, Kevin. Yeah. We used to love men going to the ridiculous lengths to... Try to kill themselves you, to get yeah, some chocolate. Yeah, yeah, we like that. <laughs> yeah, we want to see we, you push the boundaries for us. don't even know if the lady knows him. <laughs> yeah. You know, just doing that some like, get off my boat <laughs> and stop giving my wife chocolates. You've never met her. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's do a few. This is the uh, spot in the show where we uh, examine some of my fan mail, uh, some of your <laughs> fan mail as well. Uh, mean tweets. Why the f am I here waiting for Kevin O? That full ride thinks he's so important he can keep me waiting. That was my tweet. Ah, I tweeted that on I Friday morning. That. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> and I retweeted it. <laughs> Here's number two. This one's not from me. It's from one of our loyal viewers. Looking forward to hearing JJ, Penny and Daisy on the talk. Not looking forward to permanently liquored up <laughs> artist Kevin O's <laughs> slurring. It's the BBC's fault. They're to blame. Hick, hick. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, <laughs> that, this is the, whoever this <laughs> is, they all say I've been drinking. You know, I don't need to drink to be offensive. You know. <laughs> Let's go to a real break. What just happened? He's mad as hell. It's Kevin O'Sullivan. Welcome back to What Just Happened. Now, supporting Palestine is your right in a free country like Britain. I would suggest that after the horrors Israel suffered at the blood-soaked hands of Hamas, this is not a great time to wave the Palestinian flag and rail against the Jewish state. But if you somehow feel you're striking a blow for freedom against your pantomime villain of the Middle East, go right ahead. Hold hands with the anti-Semites who don't so much love Palestine as they hate Israel's very existence. Who can fathom the motivation of Queers for Palestine, an organization that doesn't seem to understand that under the tyranny of Hamas, frightened gay people face perpetual fear, persecution, and even execution. In the fundamentalist hell of Gaza, LGBTQ rights are decidedly thin on the ground, non-existent, in fact. British gay rights campaigners might be for Palestine, but Palestine is very definitely not for them. Uh, so why are they marching for zealots who despise them? A significant number of Palestinian gays flee to claim asylum in Israel, where they will not be terrorized and victimized because of their sexuality. And yet queers for Palestine think Israel is the bad guy. Why do the rest of the obsessively pro-Palestine protesters who have been demonstrating all over Britain, especially in London, blame Israel for being attacked? by Hamas's terrorist murderers and baby beheading rapists? Why are they against the region's only democracy, but emphatically for the dictators who rule Palestine with medieval brutality? Why did former Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, an Israel hater who called the fanatical thugs of Hamas and Hezbollah his friends, refuse to condemn Hamas's atrocities? Why did he refuse to condemn slitting the throats of infants, indiscriminate rape and the mowing down of 260 music fans in a hail of bullets. Because as far as Comrade Corbyn is concerned, and as far as so many of his fellow apologists are concerned, Israel is an evil occupier that had it coming. Just one week after Hamas's horrific massacre, there was useful idiot Corbyn shouting to his pro-Palestine pals about Israel's war crimes. No mention of Hamas's very recent war crimes. Uh, let's hear it for the people of the West Bank, he bellowed in his furrow-browed fervour. Let's hear it for the people of Gaza. Did he say let's hear it for the little kids, for the mothers, for the fathers, for the grandmothers and the grandfathers whose lives were suddenly cut short in the worst genocide of Jews since the Holocaust? No, of course he didn't. Many believe that since the formation of the Jewish state in 1948, Palestinians have been displaced, 
made homeless and treated appallingly by Israel. These are not unjustified charges, but after a period of relative peace to insist that they warrant the grotesque barbarism meted out by Hamas's monsters on a sunny Saturday morning is frankly perverse. As London heaved with misguided protests, the saddest sight was the dueling vigils for the dead, where Palestinians gathered to mourn those who died in a week of relentless Israeli bombing. They were joined by Brits of all derivations, particularly middle-class, middle-aged white people, a diverse display of grief and sympathy, where Jews gathered to mourn their fallen brethren. There were only Jews on their own, still victims of the left-wing hardline anti-Zionism that looks suspiciously like anti-Semitism, with due respect and tears for the suffering of the innocents in Gaza. Hamas started this fight. I stand with Israel. They did start it, didn't they? Well, if we look at well, the yes period, or no? hang on, no, no, no. <laughs> they start it. No, they, no, yeah. if we, no, it's a yes, no answer. No, 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 no. It is. We've got to it look is. at the period before they all didn't of this start it. Off. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> They, we have to look at the period before no, all we of don't. this kicked. We no, do, we don't. because since no, we don't. 2008, over 6,000 Palestinian civilians have been killed. So it's okay what Israel, did, no, Israel, Israeli citizens have been over 300. So absolutely not. Ham Hamas should have never done this. It's grotesque, it's disgusting. But for you to conflate. Uh, supporting Palestinian civilians, I don't. somehow supporting Hamas is completely different. I don't. Different. Did you see what I said? But then at you the said end. it's dangerous to I be I said, with all Palestine. due respect and tears for innocent uh, mm. Palestinians in Gaza, and I do have sympathy and tears for them. Most Palestinians, I keep saying this, are the, they're the same as everybody else. Most yeah. people in the world are just trying to get by. So most of those Palestinians crammed into that tiny strip of land uh, are just trying to put a roof over their heads, yeah. feed their kids, mm -hmm. make a living. You know, uh, they're not politically motivated. It's not their fault. So it is with respect and fear and tears for them. So why don't uh, people but understand? They, they, Hamas started it, I'm afraid. But uh, why can't people understand then, if you can understand people are cramped and civilians, thousands have yeah, been yeah, dying, yeah. why can't you go and march peacefully? We know I voted for Brexit. I wanted Brexit to happen. When I went to march, I wasn't one of these ignorant idiots that were racist, deport the whole lot of them. You're going to get idiots at every protest. There were idiots Agreed. at the Palestinian protest. Good point. But largely, the majority of people protesting was in support of the civilians, not supporting Hamas. Mm. No, I, I, you know, and I absolutely, I'm with you on that. I mean, you know, Thanks. it's not, it's not, well, well, I never said anything <laughs> else. Hamas are different from the people of Palestine, yes. from the people uh, trapped in the Gaza Strip, because that's what they are. They are trapped uh, and Hamas uh, it seems to me JJ are prepared to sacrifice those poor people yeah, so, so they can make Israel look well. bad right yeah absolutely um, and unfortunately I feel like Israel are playing into their hands but I can I, I can see no other reason no other way for them to interact if I was an Israeli yeah. and this growth these horrible acts have been happening yeah. I wouldn't actually have any any kind of sense of let me calm down first and think about the long, long game. I'd be thinking, let me go in there and get rid of Hamas. Let's hammer them out of there and destroy them. And if there's some civilian casualties, so be it, if it means getting rid of Hamas. That's, that's, that's what I would be thinking if I was in Israel. That's absolutely. exactly what they are thinking. Yeah. I mean, they are going to... I mean, the, the IDF, the Israel Defence Force, is a very disciplined army. Yeah. yeah. There are about yeah. 400,000 of them. Uh, and insofar as they are able to, I think they will show restraint. But JJ's right, Lim. And that, I agree. That, Israel that, have a right to defend itself. Yeah, but they, 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 they have also calculated that civilians are going to die. And a lot and will. And they're going to let that happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And to be honest with you, I do think, uh, what do you think, JJ? I do think that it's incumbent upon Israel. They have to exact revenge. They have to avenge what happened to their people. Yeah. Otherwise, they're not defending their people. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, some people are trying to say this is now um, Muslim versus Jew. But actually, there, there is, there's Muslims in the um, Defence Force for Israel. But there, there's, there's also, there's, there's, there was a lot, there's a lot of Jewish people that actually attended the recent march for Palestine because they also understand that a lot of civilians have died, will die, and thousands yeah. have died since 2008. Yeah, absolutely. Abs yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But not every Jewish person in the world is from Israel. Mm. So Exactly, yeah. But, yeah. But, but as I said earlier, the thing about wars is uh, peoples 
do not fight peoples. Governments fight yeah. governments yeah. and peoples get dragged along and uh, that's when you get civilian uh, casualties. casualties. And, of course, uh, you know, Hamas, they're just theological tyrants. They're thugs yeah. and they have yeah. misruled the poor people of the Gaza they Strip have. for 13 long years. Yeah. And if this brings about an end to their disgusting dictatorship, uh, at least some good will come out of this. It is time now, though, far more importantly, for another bad ad. Break from work, a welcome sight. Hot beef, beef, hot roll, puts us right. It buffs us up, warms right through, helps us through the day. Bovril, delicious, warming, reviving. There's nothing quite like Bovril's beefy taste to put new heart into you, fast. It bucks us up, warms right through, helps us through the day. Get some Bovril now. Do you, like, do, you, do, you, do you like Bovril? No. And what are all those four men doing in that house by themselves? Oh, I don't know. Was there a woman in there? There's Wait, one woman. Waiting with a one woman four, with a hot kettle. It doesn't have to be a woman now, does there? <laughs> it's a bit strange, isn't it? Yeah. Four men in the middle of nowhere sitting around having a hot Bovril. Well, mm. producer <laughs> Chuck is uh, yelling in my ear. They're farmers. <laughs> That's that's what they're doing. That doesn't explain it. it. Makes any better doesn't explain. Oh, that's why they won't march in the house and drink bovril. Yeah. Like, they're farmers. They walk around like the seven dwarfs. So you get Weirdos. you still get bovril at football, can't you? Do, you, you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you do. Yeah, you do. It's like bovril. drinking marmite, isn't it? It's disgusting. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, I try. I, I, oh. I don't eat meat anymore. But a couple of years ago, I went to a match. Charlton. It was. I thought, oh, I'll, you know, I'll try this bovril thing. <laughs> what is this? It's like liquid meat. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. Oh, it's disgusting. Salty water. Hideous. Yeah. Idiots. I bet the Bovril fan, uh, firm is l really <laughs> loving watching this show. Um, I believe we have another bad ad uh, for another dubious product. You don't say ham, you say spam. Spam is real spite. Ham, you don't say ham, you say spam. Ham, you don't say ham, you say spam. I used to like hey. spam. I used to love I've it. I've never yeah. seen so yeah. many options of how to cook spam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spam kebab. Spam and corned beef, they were a staple. Well, you know, corned beef, both spam, I think corned beef definitely was started as a war product. Yeah. Where, you know, they mixed it so they didn't need much meat to make a block of brown yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it's now quite expensive and regarded as something of I a like delicacy. Yeah. But ha Sweet peppers, fry it up. Yeah, yeah, but spam never got a good press, but I always liked it as <laughs> yeah. a kid, didn't you? I've never had it. spam. Ever. Oh, I loved it, yeah. yeah. I don't eat pork anymore, but when I was a kid, I used to love it. Really? Mm. No, I've never had it. I was going to get you a can of spam. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, I'll get you some uh, corned beef. <laughs> Add some bovril. Uh, listen, guys, it's uh, been a great show. Thank you very much, Lynn May, for coming along. And also... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, JJ Annecy. I mean, no, seriously, thanks, mate. As always, that has been another amazing edition of What Just Happened. We'll be back, same place, same time, next week. What just happened?